Hey, this is Rebecca Dirks for PremierGuitar.com. We are here at the Rosemont Theater at the Dream Theater Show, and we are checking out John Mayung's bass rig with his guitar tech. How are you doing today? I'm um, pretty good. How are you doing? Good. Uh, you want to start off by checking out the basses? Yeah, sure thing. He's playing uh, Music Man bongo six strings. And this year what they did was they took the standard six string and they're making it with a five string neck. So basically the spacing is shrunk down a little bit more, which for their kind of music really helps because he's got to get around on it in, in a quite a bit of a hurry. So. so it's basically like the old ones, but shrunk down, same body size, two pickups, basswood. And uh, they're working out great. Ernie Ball and Music Man has been, it's been killer just kind of helping us out with all this stuff. And uh, he's really loving these things now. So. Is that uh, custom for John, or is that like a production model? Yeah, right now it's just for him. Their standard production has the wide neck. It's more like a, you know, boat paddle. But uh, these they started doing for him last year with a smaller body. He didn't like the smaller body. They kept the body size, shrunk the neck, and it's been awesome ever since. Cool. And uh, what pickups are in that? Just stock Ernie Ball pickups, humbucker single coil, and uh, just even blend of both. It's actually just got a volume knob on it. These three right here are just for show. So, because what happened is, you know, we used to have to make sure everything was centered every time we changed bases, and we never really messed with them. So we figured just keep them hardwired, and that's one less thing to worry about. So. All right. Cool. And uh, what does he string those up with? Uh, Ernie Ball strings from a 32 on the high to a 130 on the bottom. So is he using any other bases, or just kind of uh, different variations on that? Music man, we've got another. Uh, we've got a really cool blue one here that we use for some of the alternate tuning stuff. Okay. And basically there's a couple songs, one with it's, it's a low A and one it's a low D, and I kind of just alternate tunings with this one uh, until we get some more out, and then we'll have some dedicated ones, but same configuration, same, same skin your neck. But it's sparkly. Yes, yeah, so this one, I like this one a lot. It's not black, which I like. It's a little <laughs> different for him, so. And it actually sounds killer. It's a really good sounding bass. Oh. And then uh, we've also got a fretless out with us, which we occasionally use. There's like a little acoustic portion of the show every so often, and he'll sit down and play a little fretless on that. Again, kind of the same configuration, all just same neck, just fretless, and another killer sound and bass. So you basically found the right fit and feel for him and pretty stuck much. with it? Yeah, pretty much. He's been really happy this year with these, so hopefully that'll be it for a while. No more changes. So uh, what, what kind of strings are you using? Uh, they're all Ernie Ball, just the standard, uh, you know. Standard six string, long scale slinkies, 32 to 130. And uh, yeah, they're great. Ernie Ball's been just amazing for, for us and for John Petrucci as well, just working on his guitars and always doing new prototypes and working with him. So it's been cool. And uh, so how, how is he amplifying the bass then? So what's happened, it's coming off the wireless. We're using Sure Wireless Systems, the UR4D. We've got two receivers. Goes into a switcher. So depending on what bass I hand him, I hit one of these two. And there's also an emergency hardwire going into one of those two in case something happens with the, with the wireless. Um, out of that, it goes into this awesome radial JD7 splitter, which is killer. It's quiet, does exactly what we need it to do. From there, it splits off, sends the signal to a Demeter tube DI and right to audio land as a real basic sound. Uh, his second out goes into this Demeter optical compressor, then a Demeter pre into the Demeter power amp. And that's the bulk of his sound that he has in his ears. It runs off of this power amp into a radial JDX, which is like a direct box speaker simulator. And uh, that kind of is the main tone that he's using now. Um, the third output goes into this another awesome piece, the uh, Axe FX, the Fractal Audio Axe FX. And that's handling all of his processing. Basically, any overdrive you hear, any uh, chorus, verb. We've got, you know, a couple examples here. As I Am, it's got that really cool harmonic bass intro. We've got a patch just for that. We've got some flange, some other crunch stuff, and uh, it's great. It's an, it's an amazing unit, and you'll see over in uh, JP's rig, he's got the same. So for all the switching, we're using the, uh, the Fractal MFC 101 switcher, and uh, it's basically super easy, super user-friendly. We've just got all the patches that he needs labeled out here, so, you know, he uses it pretty sparingly. Little parts here and there in songs, he'll kick on some overdrive. Um, he's got a couple different octave settings. And we're always kind of changing stuff around and, you know, depending on the songs. And he'll, he'll get ideas like, hey, can you come up with a cool octave patch for this song? And we'll just kind of program it and throw a, throw a label on it and we're good to go. You got a volume pedal? Yeah, volume pedal just for master volume. He likes to bring it back in tune once in a while between songs. Um, 
And then this year he started using the uh, the Taurus three pedals, which is which is really cool. So how's he using that? Just kind of sort of the Getty Lee thing, you know. He's playing, and also we'll kick these on just for some super seat rattling uh, low end out there. Um, a lot of the new stuff has uh, mode parts on it, and then some of the older stuff he's kind of incorporating it into as well. And it sounds cool. You hear when he he kicks it on it, it it's really obvious. It's pretty uh, rattling out there. It's awesome. So. Yeah, and that's about it for for his rig. You know, it's it's fairly simple compared to previous years, so it's uh, it's not bad. Makes your job a little easier. Yeah, yeah. Most of what I do now is maintain it and uh, tweak the bases during the show. You know, because they they shift a little bit depending on the weather, so we always kind of keep the uh, got to keep the action where you want, where he likes it. He's pretty particular about that. So. What what uh, how does he like the action set? It's almost factory spec, a little on the high side of factory spec, and then uh, depending on you know, like indoors, it's great, it's consistent. Outdoor shows. As the night goes on, it gets colder or warmer or whatever. They the little shift just a little bit, so I always have to measure between songs and tweak the neck, and, but not too bad. Any other kind of rig secrets, uh, you know, things that you really rely on that you might not think of every day? Mm, not so much. It's, it's pretty basic. That radio, the radial stuff really opened things up this year. The, the radial uh, JDX is like the, that two, the uh, speaker simulator, and we plugged that in at rehearsal, and like three notes in, we're like, this is great, so... That's really been an important part of his tone. And then, you know, the little uh, action gauge I use from Stu, Stuart McDonald is killer. That's like a must-have piece. <laughs> so cool. that's about it for a, there's no, no real secrets going on. All right. Well, it sounds, uh, you know, fairly straightforward given the fact that there's a Taurus on the floor and an Axe FX in, uh, in use. Yeah. But, uh, it's not bad. Cool. Well, thank you very much for taking some time to talk with us and show us John's rig. No problem. Thanks. Thanks. This is Rebecca Dirks for PremierGuitar.com.